Hi everyone, this is Vishnu Vijay, a proud Fintrammer, and I welcome you all to the live orientation for the performance management paper. So folks, uh, in this particular session, I'm going to introduce you as to what the performance management uh, paper is all about, what are, what are all the things that we will learn here, as well as the exam related information as well. So let's get started, shall we? So I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, give me a minute. There we go. So first of all, what exactly is the uh, performance management paper all about? Let's talk about that. So I think the most important thing that you have to understand here is that the performance management paper is not just uh, calculations, because I know that some of you may have heard that, you know, the performance management, it, it contains a lot of calculations. So it's kind of an easy, you just have to learn the calculations, etc. But uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, when it comes to the performance management paper, it's like 50% calculations. And the next, uh, the other 50% is basically the explanation of these calculations. So you will have to calculate the numbers and also you will have to, uh, you, you should be able to interpret what these numbers are as well. So that's basically as to what the performance management paper, how it would be uh, tested in the exam. So be, be ready with the calculation aspect as well as the theoretical aspects that you learn throughout the syllabus as well. So knowing both these concepts are important. Now, what is performance management exactly? So when we talk about organizations, business organizations, the, what exactly do they do? The main purpose of these kinds of business organization is basically the fact that they will have an ultimate objective and they conduct daily activities to achieve that objective in the future, isn't it? So that's basically as to what organizations do. Now, in order to achieve this objective, they will have to implement certain strategies as well as certain, uh, you know, plans, techniques and budgets in order to get to that objective. So these are the things. So these strategic things are what we, we are going to learn in the performance management aspects. Basically, as the name suggests, it's basically managing the performance of an organization appropriately so that they can achieve their objective as simple as that. So that is what performance management is all about. And of course, yes, it does involve numbers. For example, uh, in order to achieve certain objectives, uh, certain long-term objectives, we have to plan for certain short-term objectives as well, isn't it? So when we plan for short-term objectives, I want you to think of this. Uh, if we have a target set on a daily basis, then it would be a bit more easier to get uh, to achieve objectives, short-term objectives, right? And if we achieve our short-term objectives, then automatically we are gonna achieve our long-term objectives as well. So that's basically the principle here. So setting targets, uh, you know, it, it could be financial targets. That's how it, that's how the numbers are involved here as well. So we look at, you know, financial aspects, uh, here as well. For example, uh, if we have, let's say, a contract uh, coming to us, so uh, is the contact is that particular contract something that we should, you know, look forward to, or is it something that we should ignore, or is there any other options that we can, uh, you know, adopt for that contract, or is it in line with our objectives? So there are a lot of things that you need to think about when it comes to performance management. So let's get to that, right? So let's let's understand as to what all things should we learn when it comes to the performance performance management paper. So let's take a look at the syllabus here. We have uh, six parts here. Uh, it used to be five parts. Now we have one more additional thing and we will get into that. So let's take a look at the first aspect, shall we? We have part A. What is part A all about? Part A, I'm just going to move the screen so that you can all see. Well, yeah, there we go. So part A is basically information technologies and systems for organizational performance. So in order to enable efficient performance within the organization, we need to have some uh, systems and technologies in place. So that is what we, we will be looking at when it comes to part A. And let me tell you guys, there's not much numbers involved in part A. It's just a complete theory and it's, it's easier and interesting as well because it has all the uh, industry uh, updated, uh, you know, concepts such as big data and data analytics, etc. as well. So it all comes under part A of the syllabus. And secondly, we have part B, which is specialized cost and management accounting techniques. 
So this is where you learn about costing techniques. If you have attended the uh, MA paper, management accounting paper before, then you would know about some of the basic costing techniques. So you will learn about these techniques as well, the traditional technique, uh, traditional costing technique. And moreover, you are going to also learn about some advanced costing techniques as well. So that's basically as to what part B is all about. And yes, it involves a lot of uh, numerical aspects to it as well. Now, moving on, but yeah, as I've stated earlier, numerical concepts aren't the only thing that's important when it comes to the PM exam, uh, the theoretical aspects or how you, or, or basically to put it very simply, you just have to understand the meaning of the numbers when it comes to PM. And that's like the key thing that you have to keep in mind. So moving on to part C, which is basically decision-making techniques. Now, uh, this particular uh, area is kind of, uh, you know, quite interesting. You will, there are instances where you have to like think outside the box and where you learn about uh, a new method of analysis called CVP analysis, etc. So it's kind of interesting. We will, uh, you know, deep dive into that throughout the uh, course as well. So don't worry about that. Uh, and uh, the next aspect to it is basically budgeting and control. As I stated earlier, it's all about setting targets and achieving. That's basically what budgeting is all about. And of course, uh, there are also certain other, uh, you know, uh, theoretical aspects as well as certain graphical aspects to it as well. So we will learn about all those things throughout the course as well. And then we have performance measurement and control. How exactly can we measure performance and how exactly can we control the performance? Because if we are not, you know, things are doing, our, doing the activities within the organization as planned, then obviously there's some problem with it, isn't it? So we will have to control any, uh, any sort of ideal, uh, idle time being wasted or uh, any sort of uh, inefficiencies within the organization, etc. That's basically what we will be learning in this particular syllabus area as well. So. So these are all the syllabus aspects. And then we have a new uh, syllabus area added to our course as well. So uh, this particular syllabus area is basically part F, which is employability and technology skills. And as the name suggests, there's no knowledge aspects to be learned here. It's just the skills or uh, a few things that you just have to keep in mind when attending a CBE exam. That's basically it. So employability and technological skills are basically some aspects that you have to keep in mind since, uh, since you know, uh, the modern industry requires you to understand as to uh, how the Excel, uh, you know, or spreadsheets work or word processors work. How do you how do you manage things or how do you uh, work efficiently in these sort of uh, workspaces? So that's basically as to what this is. And of course, uh, you know, we will be covering these particular skills when it uh, when we practice a lot of questions in the uh, revision in bootcamp okay folks so don't worry about that so that is basically uh, just to give you an idea about all the syllabus related aspects when it comes to the performance management paper so now let's move on to the next aspect shall we so now that we understood everything about the syllabus so let's talk about the exam structure here so what exactly is the exam structured for performance management so we know that PM or most skill subjects are like a three hour exam. We already know that. But when it comes to the uh, you know, PM paper, there are yet again, three sections, which is kind of similar to some of the other exams as well. Uh, so we have three sections, section A, which contains multiple choice questions. And when we talk about multiple choice questions, I'm talking about 15 multiple choice questions, each carrying two marks. So that's basically how it is. So we will get a total of 30 marks from section A. And then we move on to uh, section B, where we have objective type questions. So you might be familiar with uh, what MCQs are from various other exams that you've attended uh, throughout the school days as well. But uh, what are OTQs or objective test questions? It's kind of similar to MCQs, but the only difference is that uh, for each OTQ, you will have 10 marks available. And what is an OTQ exactly, or how is it structured? Well, basically you will be given a scenario. You will have to read through it, identify or understand what the scenario is. And after reading through the scenario, you will have to, uh, you will have to answer five multiple choice questions relating to that particular scenario. 
So that's basically it, okay, folks. That's basically the idea as to what an OTQ is. And of course, then uh, you know we have MCQs here, each MCQ. So we have five MCQs relating to a particular scenario, each carrying two marks. So five times two is ten, isn't it? So that's basically uh, how the OTQs works. And of course, don't worry, we will be uh, you know practicing. Uh, a lot of MCQs as well as OTQs throughout our sessions as well. So don't worry about that. Now, moving on to the uh, third aspect, and this is kind of the really interesting aspect as well, which is basically section C. So in section C, we will have to, you know, as I stated earlier, there are questions which require you to do the do some calculations in a spreadsheet. And there will also be questions which require you to theoretically explain the numbers on a word processor as well. So uh, we have we have many types of questions in relation to the various syllabus areas, and we will be practicing, uh, you know, uh, most of these questions throughout the sessions as well. So don't worry about that. So uh, in section C, you have two CRQs or constructive response questions, or in other words, case study questions. That's basically it. And uh, each of these CRQs will carry 20 marks each. And there are, you know, let me tell you guys, uh, when, whenever you, you know, don't get, don't be frightened by uh, the fact that there are like 40 marks, 20 marks for each questions, etc. Uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, key thing that you have to understand here is that there are methods to gain easy marks in each and every question. And there are also some exam techniques that you can adopt to score the full marks available as well. And we will be learning about all these things when we take a look at the uh, revision bootcamp as well. So don't worry about that. Now. So that is basically what the exam structure is all about. Now, moving on to the next aspect that is time allocation. So what exactly, uh, or, or why exactly are we looking at this anyway? Well, the idea is quite simple. What you have to understand here is that when it comes to uh, an exam, one of the most important factors or most important challenges that you face here is regarding time, isn't it? So how can we manage time or what should be the uh, you know, time strategy when it comes to uh, these exams? Let's talk about that. So folks, uh, when it comes to the uh, time related aspect of the exam, uh, let me just uh, show you the uh, full slide. There we go. So when it comes to the aspect of time, there is an ACC recommendation that you should use 1.8 minutes per mark. However, I feel that it's a bit too generous. Okay, folks, they're being a bit too generous. We, we, uh, how, uh, I would say that uh, let's not take that approach and let's take a bit more conservative approach because uh, we don't know as to whether we will be able to finish it in the exact time, right? So what I would do is uh, I would keep some amount of time as buffer time in case if I you know, take too much time. So uh, what I would do is I would use a conservative approach and use 1.5 minutes per mark as a guideline to create my time strategy. So with this particular uh, uh, strategy, how much time should we take for each session to tackle the uh, questions within each session? Let's take a look at that, shall we? So first of all, we have section A and section B. And uh, what is the total amount of time uh, that should be taken to tackle both of these sessions? Because we know that we there are a lot of uh, you know multiple choice questions and objective choice questions. So what is the ideal time to complete these two sections? Well, based on the uh, conservative approach, that is 1.5 uh, minutes per mark, I would say that uh, you should take a maximum of one hour and 40 minutes a maximum of one hour and 40 minutes. If you take some extra time, then that would mean that you will be you know, missing out on uh, certain questions in section C. So that's basically why we should follow a, a strict time strategy when it comes to uh, practicing questions as well, so that you can you know, get familiarized with the time strategy as well. So keep this in mind. So section A and B is one hour and 40 minutes. Okay, so we can uh, totally understand that. What about section C? So, folks, when it comes to constructive response questions, there are uh, there's a step by step process in how we tackle such questions. So, step one is uh, if you are you know if you have you know attended any other papers, you would be familiar with this. First of all, you'll have to read the requirements because uh, you know you can't just uh, uh, read the scenario multiple times because we don't have time for that. So, the first and foremost thing to do is basically to read the requirement, isn't it? Because by reading the requirement, we would be able to understand what we're supposed to do or understand what the examiner wants us to do, isn't it? So we read the requirement and then we read the scenario 
and then we plan our answer. So this is the first step into tackling the section C questions. We read and plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the total time that you take for each of the CRQs into two phases. There is reading and planning, and then there is writing because we can't just you know plan it and keep it in our heads, right? We have to write it down. So, uh, so these are the two phases, reading and planning and writing. So for each 20 mark questions, what I would do is I would utilize seven minutes, seven to eight minutes even, to read and plan the particular question that has been provided to us. I read the requirement, I read the scenario, I highlight the relevant information which I might need to uh, you know, structure my answer. And then I plan uh, a simple structure of the answer in my head. So that, that should be done within seven minutes. And then there is the writing aspect as well. So we take the next 30 minutes to write down our answer. If you can take less time, then that's great. But uh, there is a reason why I'm communicating this particular strategy at this point in time or at the uh, you know starting phase of the course. Why exactly is that? Well, this is basically because when it comes to uh, practicing questions, you will have to adopt this particular time strategy because if you practice with this time strategy, then you will become more compatible with the uh, time strategy. That's basically the uh, main reason for that. So keep this time strategy in mind and uh, you know practice questions accordingly. So that's basically as to what the time allocation aspect of this is all about. Now let's move on to the next aspect, shall we? So we're going to have the how to prepare aspect. So we've looked at what the syllabus is. We understood what we're going to learn in the performance management paper. And then we looked at the exam structure. Now we know how the examiner is going to test the exam. And now we also know as to what the time strategy is, or would be when you, uh, you know, attend that particular or, or, or when you tackle the exam, isn't it? So now the next thing that you have to know is how exactly should you prepare for the exam? Now, this is, a, I would say, it's a step-by-step -step approach. Okay, folks, the first and foremost steps or our first two steps are kind of, uh, I would say, obvious to you. But uh, yeah, let me remind you uh, about some, uh, some additional things that you, you will have to do when tackling this paper as well. So we already know that step one is basically to learn the syllabus itself, isn't it? Understand what, uh, what the uh, syllabus is or what are the topics and all the concepts contained within the syllabus is all about. And of course, yeah, whenever you're, you know, uh, let me just remind you this, whenever you are reading through the syllabus or whenever you're learning a topic, you should always keep this factor in mind. In PM, it's all about understanding the meaning of the numbers. So if you don't understand, it's not just, you know, this is not a mathematical exam where you can just, uh, you know, learn the uh, calculation aspect of it step by step and apply it in the exam. That's not that's not what we're doing here. We are managing the performance of an organization. Therefore, we will have to learn about the methods of calculating things and uh, what we use these calculations for as well. Okay, folks, it's 50% calculation and 50% uh, discussion paper as well. So keep this in mind. So learn the syllabus, learn 100% of the syllabus. Don't miss out or don't ignore any topics or concepts. You have to learn everything. Okay, folks, that's basically the first step. And secondly, we have practice, practice, and practice. So when it comes to skill level as well as professional level exams in ACCA, it's really important to practice questions. Why exactly is that? Because there's not going to be much direct question asked, isn't it? So you, what, what they'll do is they'll provide you with a scenario and you'll have to apply the knowledge that you've learned from the syllabus to that scenario that has been provided to you. Now, in order to do that, in order to do that, you will need to have a skill. What skill am I talking about? I'm talking about knowledge application. Knowledge application is basically applying what you've learned to a practical scenario. So you can only do that with practice, isn't it? So practice a lot of questions, practice a lot of exam standard questions and practice a lot of past paper questions, et cetera. Okay, folks, so all these things are included within the question marathon, included within the revision bootcamp. So don't worry about that. Okay, folks, keep this in mind. And of course, I've also communicated a lot of, uh, you know, exam techniques and strategies that you can adopt in the exam uh, to make your answer look more perfect for the examiner as well. So don't worry about that. Now, moving on to step three, which is past paper, doing the past paper question available within the ACCA website. But there's one more thing that I'd like to add on to that. 
in the ACC website, you can find a lot of, uh, you know, past papers. And I would suggest that you, you know, practice all of them. But there's also an additional resource that you can use along with doing the, uh, you know, past papers. What is this resource all about? It's basically the examiner's report. So why do I say that? Why, why should you read the examiner's report? Let me explain. So when, when it comes to the examiner report, I'll tell you what it, uh, how or what or how, how this particular uh, resource is all about. So uh, in this uh, examiner's report, the examiner tells you what the strong candidates do in the exam and what the poor candidates do in the exam. So what we should do is we should understand what the poor candidates are doing and then, uh, you know, don't do that in the exam, obviously. And uh, you should also understand what the strong candidates are doing so that we can adopt those measures when we attend the exam as well. So that's one aspect to it. But more than about that, in each examiner's report, there is a multiple choice question provided to you. So this particular question can be really in relation to any of the syllabus areas. That's uh, that's totally uh, you know random. We don't we can't necessarily you know point out a particular thing. But what is this question exactly? This multiple qu choice question is basically the most difficult question in that particular exam setting. So we have the examiner's report for uh, all the uh, settings for the exam, isn't it? So for that particular relevant setting, there would be a difficult multiple choice question being tested. So this particular question would be published with the examiner's report. So you will be able to practice some difficult question as well as you will also be able to understand what the strong and poor candidates are doing in the exam as well. So that is why examiner's report is also a relevant factor, which you can read along with the past paper questions as well. So I would say this should be your approach. Do a past paper question, read the answer and then you know understand where you went wrong yes we, we know how to do that already isn't it and after that read the examiner's re report relating to that particular exam setting that's something that i would recommend or that's the approach that i would recommend to go about past papers when it comes to practicing for this exam not just this exam but any acca paper as well now let's move on to the next step that is to do a mock exam so why exactly is a mock exam so relevant? Let's talk about that, shall we? So when it comes to a mock exam, the idea is that when you are attending a mock exam, the chances of you passing is increased by 30%. Okay, folks, why do I say that exactly? Because you are attending a mock, you should attend a mock exam under exam conditions. So, uh, well, this is basically because when you're attending the, uh, you know, uh, when you're attending the actual exam after the mock exam, you would be uh, feeling a bit less stressed, I would say, and there would be a bit uh, lesser, uh, I would say, pressure when writing the exam as well. So, it, uh, the exam won't be your first experience, isn't it? So, that's basically why you should attend a mock exam as well. But more than about that, the idea behind attending a mock exam with, you know, uh, FinTram Global is that you will be provided with individual feedback on your answer as well. Well, basically, the feedback is provided by yours truly. And uh, I will look into each and every paper and understand what are the areas that you need to improve, what are the areas are you good at, etc. All these things would be communicated to you once you attend a mock exam as well. You folks will keep this in mind. So that's a really important step as well. And that's a step that you should not ignore as well. Now, moving on. That's the final step is basically to, you know, go write your exam. That's basically it. go ace the exam because you're fully prepared once you, you know, went through all these uh, above steps. That's basically uh, how you should prepare for your upcoming PM exam. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So adopt this particular strategy. And there's one simple thing that I want you to uh, remember here. And that's basically this. This is a step-by-step -step process, isn't it? So the idea that I wanted to convey here is that you should not miss out on any of the steps in between. You should not just learn the syllabus and you know do the past papers or uh, you know go write your exam without a mock. So don't miss out on any of these steps. Why do I say that? Because this is like an origami. So you know the origami, right? So you just fold some paper to create some creative things for like a, a maybe a you know a, a plane or a rocket or something. So what is the idea behind an origami? What we do is we just uh, fold the paper in a step-by-step -step method to get the end result. That is basically the paper plane or a boat, et cetera, isn't it? So just like that, uh, you have to follow these step-by-step -step process to get 
the end result that is basically a perfect score in your exam. That's basically it, okay, folks? However, if I miss out on any of the folding step, will I get uh, the end result that is the paper plane? No, not really, isn't it? So that's, that's basically it, okay, folks? You should not miss out on any of these steps provided here. So keep that in mind. That's a really important point uh, that you have to uh, like uh, engrave in your minds, okay, folks? So keep this in mind. So that's basically all I wanted to cover in this particular session. And of course, we will be having more, uh, you know, weekly sessions where we, uh, you know, talk about some of the uh, technical articles or various uh, strategies, uh, some tips regarding uh, section A, section B or section C questions, etc. as well. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this particular session. And uh, if you have any sort of questions, you know uh, where to contact me uh, as well. So you can just, uh, you know, shoot them uh, just like that as well. Okay, folks, so thank you for uh, uh, your time. And I, would, I will see you later in the next session. So goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.